Imagine the implications of a weapon with no visible trace, a weapon that could knock out tanks, ships, and planes as fast as the speed of light. The same technology with modifications could disorient and even tranquilize military personnel, rendering them virtually helpless in the battle zone. These are the new weapons of war we will examine in this series. For the past 40 years, the world has been riveted by the threat of nuclear war, and more recently by the prospect of space defenses using lasers and other modern technologies. But while both sides at the Geneva summit will be focusing on these matters, progress is being made in even newer weapons that could render any arms agreement relatively useless. Lightning is the most dramatic form of energy to be found in nature. Scientists have succeeded in creating limited types of artificial lightning, and some think that these could be the forerunners of a new type of directed energy weapon, part of a family of weapons which operate within the radio frequency segment of the electromagnetic spectrum, and are thus referred to as radio frequency weapons. Dr. James Frazier has researched electromagnetic effects for the Air Force for over 10 years, and he, like a small but growing number of weapons experts, feels that radio frequency, or RF weapons, could be the wild card in the ongoing arms race. You could have tremendous amounts of radiative power, and uh, what you did with that power then is a matter of engineering design and what, what your goal is. Robert Bass, a physicist and Ph.D. in mathematics, is working on U.S. weapons research. He says that the Soviets seem to be ahead in a number of areas, and especially in RF weapons. We are behind uh, the Soviet Union in directed energy weapons based on 60 gigahertz microwave beams. Dr. Bass and others feel the most likely form of Soviet RF weaponry would be high-powered microwaves, similar to a focused ultra-high intensity radar beam. It would literally cook humans and knock out computers and electronic surveillance and communications gear. An operational RF weapon, relatively cheap and reusable, could devastate sophisticated and expensive war machinery. The $20 million F-16 fighter, for example, is totally controlled through electronic sensors and computers. With no manual flight controls, the plane would literally fall out of the sky after being hit with a high-intensity pulse of microwave radiation. Scientists say that microwaves and other types of RF pulses operating at specific frequencies or windows can be transmitted with little or no loss of power. Machines known as gyrotrons can produce the massive pulses needed to drive these devices, and it's believed that the Soviet Union has a three to five year lead in this technology. Over the past year, CNN has repeatedly asked the Department of Defense and the Air Force about radio frequency weapons. After much resistance, DOD finally said that the subject was too sensitive to discuss. In my next report, unexplained cloud-like phenomena which may be evidence of a Soviet breakthrough in RF technology. Chuck DeCaro, CNN Special Assignments. about a device which electronically injected thoughts into the human mind. In this scene, the mind control machine projects images into the brain of the chief scientist through an electrode headset. The scientist then finds himself experiencing the thoughts of a wild truck ride. But even in this futuristic Hollywood tale, the subject still had to be connected to the machine by an electrode headset. That's remarkable. But not as remarkable as a real-life experiment where I was the subject of a prototype device designed to project images into the mind without electrodes. The prototype machine developed from Soviet scientific data could, according to some scientists, have a profound effect as a weapon of war. Electronic mind control research is not new. A scientific milestone in this area came in the 1960s when Dr. Jose Delgado demonstrated remote control over a charging bull. By connecting a radio antenna to electrodes inserted into the bull's brain, Delgado proved that the animal's aggressive impulses could be thwarted by electronically manipulating the bull's muscle reflexes. Do you realize the fantastic possibilities if from the outside we could modify the inside could we give messages to the inside? But the beauty is that now we are not using electrodes. In recent years, Delgado has shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsating magnetic fields. But in these experiments, there were no antenna implants. Any function in the brain, emotions, intellect, 
personality, well, could be perhaps modified by this non-invasive technology. Delgado's research has so far been limited to animals. But in the Soviet Union, a radio frequency, or RF device, has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients. It's called a LIDA machine. It radiates pulses of radio frequency energy, as well as light, sound, and heat. The pulse rate is in the extremely low frequency range, between 0 and 100 pulses per second. Dr. Ross 80 is the top researcher at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Loma Linda, California. He has been investigating the effects of the LIDA machine. Now, what do the Soviets use this machine for? Well, they don't use it anymore. We should be very clear that uh, this is a machine which is regarded by them as, as uh, somewhat obsolete technologically. This scientist, who did not want his identity revealed, is employed by the U.S. government and has done secret RF weapons research. He believes that tests done with the LIDA and similar machines prove that humans are susceptible to remote alterations of mood and awareness. Certain kinds of weak electromagnetic signals work exactly like drugs. And so the promise is that anything you can do with drugs, you could do with the right electromagnetic signals. Apparently, there are specific sites involved, specific functions involved. It's a matter of matching up, just like it is with a pill or a drug to cause an effect. You could have a cause and effect relationship between a magnetic field and a biological function. CNN enlisted the help of noted physicist Dr. Elizabeth Rauscher and electrical engineer Bill Van Weiss to build and test an RF mine interference machine from data found in Soviet scientific literature. The machine itself was inexpensive and easy to construct using parts from a consumer electronics store. It emits a weak magnetic field pulsed at extremely low frequency. As the subject of the test, I was blindfolded and my ears were blocked to prevent inadvertent clues as to what was happening. A magnetic probe was placed about 18 inches from my head. As the experiment began, two signal generators produced waveform patterns that were transmitted by the magnetic probe at about one one thousandth of the Earth's natural magnetic field strength. Describe anything that you see, if, uh, if any. In the control room, Van Weiss buried the waveforms being generated. In another room, I could see waveforms changing shape in my mind. Parabola just went by? Uh, parabola just went by. Oh, yeah, I did. I just flipped the switch. Parabola? Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's see. Check this out. That's what happened. I just flipped, yeah. flipped the switch. Okay. Yeah, there's a spike right there. A spike. Pipe spike. I dramatically changed the uh, generator. I stepped it by 10 right here. And uh, the intermix from the two generators was right where uh, you said that you saw a spike. A spike. Ben Bice says that when I failed to see any change, it was because he had not set the proper frequency and power levels. Later, I asked Ben Bice what a weapon using this technology could do. Induce. Uh basically what would be considered hallucinations in people, direct them to uh, do things against their so-called better judgment. How easy would it be to assemble a weapon from existing off-the-shelf parts? In three weeks, um, I could put together a weapon that would uh, take care of a whole town. We showed the results of our test to Dr. Robert Becker, a two-time Nobel nominee for his work in the biological effects of electromagnetism. This is a very significant experiment because it carries our understanding of how vision is actually performed a step further in, into the mystery. He said he thought the machine caused a disturbance in the brain's interpretation of vision and as such could be used as a weapon. Uh, that, that kind of a, of a disturbance in the visual system could markedly influence the operations of uh, fighter pilot, helicopter pilot, uh, or the even a, uh, a simple, a, an aberration in the visual field as making everyone seeing double, or everyone having their visual field jitter like a poorly adjusted television screen. Uh, the effect upon, of that upon the efficiency with which an army an Air Force or a Navy would operate would be catastrophic. More about RF weapons in my next report. Chuck DeCaro, CNN, Special Assignments. Broadcast by a number of high-powered radio transmitters operating deep in the Soviet Union since July 4, 1976. 
Though the official Defense Department explanation of the Woodpecker is that it is an over-the-horizon radar designed to track U.S. missile launches, some uh, scientists suspect uh, that the Woodpecker is designed to interfere with human uh, brain function. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the potential that this has for producing a direct psychoactive effect upon the total American population is there has never been disproven. Dr. Robert Becker is a pioneer in the field of bioeffects of electromagnetism. Uh, the signal range within which the woodpecker operates is that which has been reported by many investigators to produce a tranquilizing effect upon animals. We are just incredibly sensitive to these magnetic stimuli. Dr. Bob Beck, a PhD in nuclear engineering, has done extensive research into electromagnetic effects on humans. The signal was permeating power grids in the United States. It was being picked up by power lines, re-radiated. It was coming into the homes on the light circuits. I was surprised uh, after coming here that the influence of electromagnetic fields was uh, almost completely ignored here. Dr. Larissa Volonskaya was heavily involved in Soviet electromagnetic research before being allowed to emigrate to the United States. She told CNN about Soviet research in electromagnetic effects. They demonstrated theoretically and also demonstrated experimentally that um, low frequency, low uh, um, energy electromagnetic fields also can um, uh, possess biological influence, biological efficiency uh, because uh, uh, the, any field not only carries energy, but also carries information. She stated that the research was carried out on orders from the Soviet government. Of course, uh, the military were extremely interested in, uh, in uh, this potential of remote influence. Is the United States military working in the field of electronic mind control? Officially, the Department of Defense will not comment because the subject area is, quote, too sensitive. But CNN has learned from this government scientist, who did not want to be identified, that a Navy laboratory conducted research into the use of an RF device for counterterrorism and special operations. It's possible to entrain a certain percentage of a population, apparently, with weak magnetic fields. The study also showed that RF signals could dissolve certain types of rat brain cells at a distance, causing disorientation and nausea. According to the scientist, even though the program was successful, the government never followed up on it. The Department of Defense will not comment about Soviet RF weapons, or if American RF weapons development is going forward. However, experts interviewed by CNN say that the Soviets are apparently ahead and could exploit that lead in a surprise strategic move a move that could have grave consequences for the United States. From Washington, this is Chuck DeCaro, CNN Special Assignments.